Hello, and welcome back to the Southern Bible Thumper channel. For this upload, we will be reading Leviticus chapter 15. And the Lord spake unto Moses and to Aaron, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, When any man hath a running issue out of his flesh, because of his issue he is unclean. And this shall be his uncleanness in his issue, whether his flesh run with his issue, or his flesh be stopped from his issue, it is his uncleanness. Every bed whereon he lieth that hath the issue is unclean, and everything whereon he sitteth shall be unclean. And whosoever toucheth his bed shall wash his clothes, and bathe himself in water, and be unclean until the even. And he that sitteth on anything whereon he sat that hath the issue shall wash his clothes, and bathe himself in water, and be unclean until the even. And he that toucheth the flesh of him that hath the issue shall wash his clothes, and bathe himself in water, and be unclean until the even. And if he that hath the issue spit upon him that is clean, then he shall wash his clothes, and bathe himself in water, and be unclean until the even. And what saddle soever he rideth upon that hath the issue shall be unclean. And whosoever toucheth any thing that was under him shall be unclean until the even. And he that beareth any of those things shall wash his clothes, and bathe himself in water, and be unclean until the even. And whomsoever he toucheth that hath the issue, and hath not rinsed his hands in water, he shall wash his clothes, and bathe himself in water, and be unclean until the even. And the vessel of earth that he toucheth, which hath the issue, shall be broken, and every vessel of wood shall be rinsed in water. And when he that hath an issue is cleansed of his issue, then he shall number to himself seven days for his cleansing, and wash his clothes, and bathe his flesh in running water, and shall be clean. And on the eighth day he shall take to him two turtle doves, or two young pigeons, and come before the Lord unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, and give them unto the priest. And the priest shall offer them, the one for a sin offering, and the other for a burnt offering. And the priest shall make an atonement for him before the Lord for his issue. And if any man's seed of copulation go out from him, then he shall wash all his flesh in water, and be unclean until the even, and every garment, and every skin, whereon is the seed of copulation, shall be washed with water, and be unclean until the even. The woman also, with whom man shall lie with seed of copulation, they shall both bathe themselves in water, and be unclean until the even. And if a woman have an issue, and her issue in her flesh be blood, she shall be put apart seven days, and whosoever toucheth her shall be unclean until the even. And everything that she lieth upon in her separation shall be unclean. Everything also that she sitteth upon shall be unclean. And whosoever toucheth her bed shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in water, and be unclean until the even. And whosoever toucheth anything that she sat upon shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in water, and be unclean until the even. And if it be on her bed, or on anything whereon she sitteth, when he toucheth it, he shall be unclean until the even. And if any man lie with her at all, and her flowers be upon him, he shall be unclean seven days, and all the bed whereon he lieth shall be unclean. And if a woman have an issue of her blood many days out of the time of her separation, or if it run beyond the time of her separation, all the days of the issue of her uncleanness shall be as the days of her separation. She shall be unclean. Every bed whereon she lieth, all the days of her issue shall be unto her as the bed of her separation. And whatsoever she sitteth upon shall be unclean as the uncleanness of her separation. And whosoever toucheth those things shall be unclean and shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in water and be unclean until the even. But... If she be cleansed of her issue, then she shall number to herself seven days, and after that she shall be clean. And on the eighth day she shall take unto her two turtles, or two young pigeons, and bring them unto the priest, to the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And the priest shall offer the one for a sin offering, and the other for a burnt offering. And the priest shall make an atonement for her before the Lord for the issue of her uncleanness. Thus shall ye separate the children of Israel from their uncleanness, that they die not in their uncleanness, when they defile my tabernacle that is upon them. That is among them. I almost had it perfect. 
This is the law of him that hath an issue, and of him whose seed goeth from him, and is defiled therewith, and of her that is sick of her flowers, and of him that hath an issue, of the man, and of the woman, and of him that lieth with her that is unclean. Summarizing Leviticus chapter 15. This is a chapter about determining the uncleanness of men, specifically genital discharges or abnormal discharges. A man with a discharge is considered unclean because of this condition. Whether it appears to have subsided or not, any bed the man lays on, any place the man sits on is unclean. Whoever touches the unclean man's bed or sits where he sat, or touches his skin, flesh, shall wash his clothes, bathe himself in water, and be considered unclean until the evening. If the unclean man spits on someone, that person who was spit upon should wash their clothes, bathe in water, and be unclean until the evening. Verse 9, whoever uses the unclean man's saddle shall be unclean. And we look here, there is no unclean until the even. <laughs> You'll be unclean if you use another man's saddle. Verse 10, if someone touches an item that was underneath the unclean person, they will be unclean until the evening. So that's what this is saying. That beareth any of those things shall wash his clothes. If you touch or carry something that was under an unclean person, you will also be unclean until the evening but you'll have to bathe and wash your clothes. Verse 11, if the unclean man touches someone else without first rinsing his hands. And this is this website that I'm on is BibleRef.com. The sources that I have are the Interlinear Bible, and this is the closest translation from Hebrew to English, and you have to read it from right to left. I have here BibleRef.com, of course, Bible Gateway, and then MiriamWebster.com to help me understand what some of these old English terms are. So verse 11, anyone that the unclean man touches and he doesn't rinse his hands first, the person who was touched must wash his clothes, bathe, and is unclean until the evening. If the unclean person touches a clay vessel, the vessel should be broken. If the person touches a wooden vessel, it should be rinsed with water. When the person with the issue is cleansed, he should take seven days to allow for cleansing. You know, sort of to monitor the same way as with leprosy. He should wash his clothes, wash his body in running water, then he is clean. On the newly clean man's eighth day, he should take two young pigeons or turtle doves to the priest who will make a sin and burnt offering as an atonement for the issue. Verse 16, if any man releases semen, he shall wash all his flesh in water and is unclean until even. Any garment or skin that semen was touched should be washed with water and unclean until the evening. So this is uh, Leviticus 15, 16. Anyone who touches a menstruating woman is unclean until the evening. Anything that the menstruating woman lays on or sits on is considered unclean. Anyone that touches a menstruating woman's bed or anything that she sat on. Any item that is on a menstruating woman's bed or on a place that she sat on. Those things are unclean until the evening. Verse 24. If a man has intercourse with a woman and she is on her flow. He is unclean for seven days and any bed that he lays on is unclean. It doesn't have a, it doesn't say until the evening, just says he's unclean. Verse 25. If a woman's menstrual flow is longer than seven days, she is unclean for as long as she is bleeding. Anything she sits on, lays on, is unclean. Anyone who touches those things that she sat or laid on should wash their clothes, bend themselves in water, and is unclean until the evening. Verse 28. 
when a woman's period is over. She should wait seven days to resume a cleanliness status. On her eighth day, she should take two turtles or two young pigeons to the priest for a sin and a burnt offering for the issue of her uncleanness. Verse 31, these practices are important for the Israelites to separate themselves from their uncleanness. So they don't die in their uncleanness when they defile his tabernacle. Verse 32 and 33, this is an ending statement specifying, I think it would be good to put that on screen. 7, 28, 29, 3, 31, 32. Okay, so 32 and 33 are the ending uh, verses for this chapter, and they're stating, this is stating that this law is addressing abnormal discharges, semen emissions that make him unclean, women on their period, and men who have intercourse with a menstruating woman. So running that red light is a definite no-go. <laughs> okay, so a person is unclean because of their issue. A running issue of their flesh in chapter 15 verse 2 so the reason why so this the way that we know that this just this discharge is not from the body that it is specifically a genital discharge is because when we look at the other things that this is coupled with um, well first of all we see that sitting on the saddle of someone who sat there, anything that the person sat on is unclean. Um, and then verse 15, chapter 15, verse 19, it mentions the woman, you know, the issue of her blood, and then it mentions the semen. So this is following the same pattern for menstruating women when we talk about the men or the abnormal discharge for men, because as we see for the menstruating woman, Anything she lays on, anything she sits on is unclean until the even. And it's the same thing for the man. And so it's a great likelihood that this discharge is meant as uh, from the genitals. So this is the, you know, we're talking about laws that God has made regarding sex. And so there's a pattern of dealing with the outcome of the act before the sex act itself. So when we first dealt with this in Leviticus chapter 12, we detailed laws regarding childbirth. And we all know childbirth is a result of um, intercourse. And then when we look at chapter 15, chapter 15 starts out talking about abnormal genital discharges and then semen emission, and then addresses laying with the woman on her cycle AKA earning those red wings. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm, sorry, I'm not gonna do it anymore. Okay. A man that lays with a menstruating woman is unclean seven days and every bed he lays on is also unclean. A woman who is menstruating is unclean the duration of her period, then has to complete a sin and a burnt offering with a priest. A sin and a burnt offering is required following a woman healing from childbirth and upon completing menstruation. But washing her body or washing her clothes is not commanded. Co uh, coincidentally, or there's another word. There's another word, but I don't have it right now. Anything any mission of semen touches must be cleansed, and the producer must clean his body, and then he's unclean until the evening. So there's that. I also thought verse 11 made me chuckle because <laughs> in the Bible, God has to tell them, rinse his hands with water, bathe with water. He has to specify <laughs> water needs to be used in your version of cleanliness. Soap is not mentioned in any of these translations. And I'm very sure it's not mentioned in the interlinear Bible, but as we see, it's numbered difference 11. And when retouches in the one who has a discharge and his hands not has rinsed in water and shall wash his clothes and bathe and water him and be clean until the evening. So 
We're not seeing any soap here. So some of these laws are, they kind of make sense when you think about there's no soup, there's no fingernail brushes to help, you know, clean the nails. So, uh, yeah. Verse 31, issues or irregularities in the body are considered uncleanness. And that's something that I noticed. So in verse 24, menstruation is also called or referred to as sick with flowers. And in that verse, when it's saying uh, any woman that be sick with flowers, right here, uh, yes, and if any man lie with her at all and her flowers be upon him, what she's saying is, what this verse is saying is if her uh, menstruation gets on the man, uh, yeah, then he will be unclean. So maybe if he's able to get around that, you know? So basically, menstruation is considered an irregularity in chapter 12, verse 2, Leviticus chapter 12, verse 2, period is referred to as infirmary. And then in verse 12, childbirth, or chapter 12, childbirth. And so thinking about these irregularities, menstruation is not a it's a period of time. So that is not the constant state of a woman's body. When we look at um, childbirth, childbirth is also for a period of time, albeit a longer period. And even though these are both natural functions of the body, that is not a constant state of the body. So just want to add that information there. Verse 16, this is uh, something that I was really interested in. <laughs> I quite understand that I am not as I understand that there would be some people that would not want to see me talking about this. And so, but I want to get through the Bible. I want to see what it has to say. So we will just have to put those feelings aside. So chapter, you know, chapter 15, verse 16, if a man has any mission of semen, he shall bathe his whole body in water and be unclean until the evening. Um, so this is, I, this, there's only two ways that this an emission for a man can happen. It can be through activity. Uh, you know, it could be through a wet dream or involuntary emission. That can happen. But more commonly, especially as men get older, it's through some sort of stimulation. So it's either with a woman or with a partner, with a partner or stimulation through the self in some manner. And so it's highly unreasonable to think that the only thing that people were doing were being with each other every time there was a sexual urge. So masturbation or self-love, I'll just call it self-love because I think that sounds nicer. Self-love is something that is not directly mentioned here, even though that has to be going on here. It just has to be, you know, there's teenage boys and I don't want to point just to them, but there are people who are, these are human, regular human beings. And these people are not, you know, the holiest of holy people. And so that self-love has to be something that's going on here. And the way God addressed it was everything that it gets on, wash it, wash your body, and you're unclean until the evening. He doesn't even, he doesn't need, there is no real, do you understand, you see how that's addressed here? And then the reason why I, you know, I am saying this is because there's, all, you know, emissions don't happen just spontaneously. You know, usually as men get older, it's usually through stimulation. So the next, the very next verse is, you know, every garment. And then the very next scenario is if a man lies with a woman. 
So this has to be addressing all of that. And I just want to point that out that sometimes, sometimes in our society, especially among Christians, and I hate to say that because I, I honestly believe that Christians have, they have good intentions. I don't believe any Christian wakes up wanting to or speaks about things, wanting to shame people or make people feel unnecessarily bad. But if you have not had a lot of trauma in your life and you have healthy sexual organs, at some point you are going to feel, um, you are going to feel those urges from time to time, especially because we live in a world that is so saturated with sex. Like, I just know that I've been at church before and the, the, uh, I don't know what to call that, that the scolding of self-love. I've, I've heard that so many times, but I always wonder like, where did you get that? Where did you get that in the Bible? Where did the Bible say that? And if it is a matter of not being able to be present for when you do get married, I mean, I would counter that with, if you know yourself, that would help in communicating with your partner. I don't want to go so deep into that because I am not, again, I am not educated for this. I am not an uh, expert in any manner. It's just, I have a real interest in this. And this is, you know, I, I, this is my hobby. I sit here and I read this and I really want to understand. But um, I'm just thinking about all those you know, for lack of better words, shaming tactics that I've heard. And I just wonder, where did you get that? Now, if you can find it and you can show me where it's at, okay. I do believe that using pornography or using sex workers, or I do believe that's wrong. And I think we all can agree that as a Christian, that is wrong. Sitting around for hours, looking at content dedicated to those urges that is not following God's command of being fruitful and multiplying. It's not. Well, it's not the way that you're supposed to be doing it, okay? But I just, if you're able to distract yourself most of the time, and maybe there's times where it's, uh, you know, you're not able to distract yourself. I just, I just, Everyone should read the Bible for themselves. Have a relationship with God for yourself. Do not let people make you feel like you need to listen to them instead of reading the Bible. And you shouldn't look at any representative, any person as God or someone you need to listen to over God and over reading the Bible for yourself. But I just thought I'll put that in there because when I read that, I was really just thinking about all the times I've heard that sentiment. Thank you for watching, and the next upload will be chapter 16.